juara kita. We are from Bimbingan International High School Indonesia. In this moment, we are going to present our research entitled The Effects and Role of Education on Scientist Determination in Jakarta for Arthritis Indonesia. First, let us begin with the introduction. Generally, sand dune is a typical landform that is formed upon the beach and you may have heard several types of it. It plays an important role to act as the natural barrier to reduce the impact of tidal waves and make the residential area low risk from a tsunami. In this research, sand dunes in Oral Turkey's Jogjakarta, Indonesia was identified. Let us tell you the special things about Oral Turkey's sand dunes. First, it is one of two virgin types of sand dunes in the world. The shape is shown in the figure. Second, it's rarely formed in a humid tropical climate instead of usual arid climates that sand dunes form. Third, it is formed by black sand from Mount Merapi volcanic material. As you can see, the figure depicts the location and landscape formation of our trees and Again from the north, there is Mount Merapi that the eruptive activity generated pyroclastic flows into the Opak River. Then the river current makes the green sand carried to the estuary that meet with the ocean current, which then make up the natural sand and carried away by the wave and wind to settle on the beach. The process continues to a Marapi sediment, which then develops into a paratrophic sediment. Moving on to the next slide, I'd like to tell you the purpose of this research. The problem in our research topic was the plantation program, which was caused by the low level of biodiversity in the dry sand dunes area. Thus, the purpose of the research was, was to identify the effect and roles of vegetation on the palm tree sand dunes. Let's continue to the next part, which is the method. This research was conducted using primary and secondary method. The primary method of this research used sand dune landscape data from Google Earth to compare vegetation spread area over the years using digitation calculation. In this research, the interview was done with five respondents who were the representative of local communities, environment activist leader, sand dune deep community member, and Parang Kritis Biomaritime Science Park. The observation was done with random sampling to identify the zoning policy of Parang Kritis sand dune. This research is also supported using secondary method which was done by processing data from Google Earth to compare primary zone area to all the years. The rainfall and vegetation were analyzed by reviewing data from the previous times. Now we have come to the next part which is findings and discussion. This research identified the deformation of parathetic sand dunes that gives them effects and roles from the spread of vegetation using comparison with map data per 5 years. In 1980, a forestry was held in the coastal areas, and after that, the vegetation grew on the sand dunes. Focusing on the primary zones, it can be seen from the figure that the area of the sand dunes has been decreasing slowly from 1985, 1990 to 1995. But for the last 10 years, from 2010, 2015 to 2020, the sand dunes area was progressively decreased. This proves that vegetation has affected the Parang Treaty sand dunes deformation. Let us tell you specifically about the sand dunes deformation before and after the plantation program. In the figure 1978, it can be seen that the sand dune is still forming its shape of marshal. There is no existence of vegetation growth which influences no horticultural farming and just few buildings in the area. In the figure 2010, it shows that there is an ongoing forestry in the coastal area, and according to the interview, it was the last time virgin shape can be seen. Lastly, in the figure 2015, there is a new vegetation law. The rapid growth of vegetation blocks the wind, and this is the beginning of the stereotype that the sand dunes can be used as horticultural farming. Next, we have two tables. The table 1 shows the important value of 10 vegetation. The important value shows that the existence of the species has a vital role to the sand dunes deformation. It shows that 80% of vegetation on parangliti sand dunes that play a bigger role is non-native vegetation. The table 2 shows the rainfall data from 1980 to 2009. It shows that rainfall is relatively the same every year on both rainy month and dry month. 
This is the picture of four vegetation that has the biggest impact on the sand dunes with the top four highest important value based on the previous table. There are two native vegetation and two non-native vegetation. As you can see in the figure, for the native vegetation, there are Pimristi, Simosa, and Pandanus tectorius. The non-native vegetation show Glyricidia sepium and Casuarina equisetifolia. These four vegetation can be found relatively easy on Panathetes sand dunes. Next, we'd like to move on to the next point, which is about the activist movement. In the beginning of 2015, the accession of sand dunes is influenced by economic activity such as tourism, building, agriculture, and film farming. This creating a community of activists called Save Our Sand Dunes Life, or known as SOSDL. SOSDL action made the media begin to expose parameters to sand dunes that increase tourism activities and damage the sand dune itself. Moving on, the increased damage to the sand dune caused the Parentalist Gale Maritime Science Park Consortium to take a firm action and creating a zoning policy that divided the sand dune area into three zones, namely primary zone, supporting zone, and restricted zone as you can see on the figure. Firstly, the primary zone. This is where the wind actively transports the sand to form a park and shape. In this area, local vegetation can grow as a biodiversity to the block wind to form park. Secondly, the restricted zone. In the zone, all anthropogenic activity must be cleared to keep sufficient sand from the marine deposition located in the four of sand dune area. The presence of vegetation in several areas in the zone is also needed to reduce the impact of erosion and high tide. Thirdly, the supporting zone. Vegetation that grows in this area serves as a barrier and protection to prevent the movement of sand to residential areas outside the primary zone. Besides that, anthropogenic activities are allowed, namely tourism area and settlements to support the economic activities. Finally, we would like to conclude this research that the lack of growth of vegetation over the years has blocked the wind corridor that disrupt sand dune function and the vegetation's role can be maximized with sustainable management of zoning policy. We therefore strongly recommend that restoration is needed for the volcan type to be reformed back. In the short term, tourism activities should be relocated not in the primary zone and economic activity can be placed by utilizing other zones. And in the long term, the design plan from the PGSP of building beach walk in the sand dune as the access for tourism activity can be actualized. We now reach the end of our presentation. Thank you for your attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and have a great day!